Hi there, uh, my name is John and welcome to our very first Vinyan Tour video newsletter. Uh, this will also be available as a podcast as we discover new wines, meet winemakers, and try to teach you as much as we can about natural wine. Uh, this of course will be the first in a multi-part series uh, and for all of you non-English speakers, you know, try to keep up with as much as you can, but of course answer, send us any questions you have by email or on Instagram and we will get back to you uh, ASAP. Uh, in each episode, we're going to try to bring you something new, uh, a new winemaker, uh, a new wine. We will interview a winemaker, but really the idea is to uh, let you get up close and personal with these wines and uh, try it before you buy. Why don't we get to trying? Uh, today we've got three wines. The first is from the Arbesh, uh, the second is from Lazio in Lago di Bolsena, that's two hours north of Rome, and uh, the last one is from the, uh, Mount Etna in Sicily from a guy named Franco Melissa. Uh, maybe, you, maybe you've heard of him. Uh, the first one actually is, uh, I really enjoy this wine a lot. It's quite special. It's from the Ardèche, which is uh, one of the hot spots of natural wine, one of the hometowns along with the Loire. Uh, there's many decades of natural wine history in the beautiful unspoiled uh, Ardèche. Uh, this wine uh, is called uh, Fruit, Le Fruit de la Patience. It's uh, from Sylvain Bock. I call him you know, the Braveheart of the Ardèche, uh, mainly because he looks like Mel Gibson in Braveheart. Uh, but he's also a very, very kind guy. Uh, this wine uh, is made in a more classic style. So usually he makes wine uh, compared to the other natural wine guys in the Ardèche who are a bit tougher. He makes wine in a more classic way. Uh, that doesn't mean he filters, that doesn't mean he adds sulfites, uh, but he just tries to uh, maybe bring a little bit more of a um, uh, structured wine, uh, a little bit more of complex wine into the glass rather than just juice. Uh, this wine is special because uh, it's a 2013 Chardonnay. Uh, it spent 12 months in the barrel fermenting, uh, which is uh, a bit uncommon uh, for natural wines who, in this area that are made kind of young. We can take a look. I mean, it's a five-year-old wine. It's got so much energy. It's got quite a bit of color. It's got a little bit of bubbles. It's a little bit gaseous, but that's all right. Wow. A little bit sweet. Quite long. Pretty complex. I mean, a really beautiful Chardonnay. Wow. I haven't had this one in a while, so really cool. He also makes a few others. Um, he has, uh, you'll see it on our website, uh, Le Grelo, which is a, much, a bit less expensive Vente de Soif, so for daily drinking. Um, a little bit more of a rebel wine. And then you have Fruit de la Patience, uh, as well as Equilibriste, uh, which is um, another one of his long, master, uh, sorry, long fermentation, longer aging wines. Uh, and this one is uh, 26 bucks. So, before I forget, I think uh, it's important to understand a bit of the history of the Ardèche. If you've never been there, I really suggest you go. Uh, it is a uh, region just to the north of, north of the Rhone, uh, Rhone underneath Lyon. Uh, he took some wines over from one of the uh, starters or founders of the national wine movement in the Ardèche, uh, Jean Oustric, uh, or as we know, uh, Domaine de Moselle. Took some vines over from him and uh, started anew. And uh, after about a decade, he's been going strong, making really consistent, great wines. Uh, if you like a bit lighter red that isn't too funky, I really suggest his reds. If you want to go something more complex uh, and still in a really great price range, uh, I suggest this guy. This next wine is uh, La Vilana, or uh, to be totally full disclosure, my sister, Joy. Uh, it's a Vino Rosato from uh, Lago di Bolsena uh, in uh, two hours north of Rome or an hour and a half north of Defense of Passage Drive. Uh, it's on a crater lake, so you have a really awesome uh, volcanic terroir. There's a, a couple other natural wine makers around there. Uh, one you may have heard of is uh, Le Coste. Uh, her wine is a much more drinkable style. It's much less volatile. Uh, it's super juicy, really great. Um, she went out there as an intern uh, or a, a stage, ended up buying and renting a few parcels of old wine uh, old vine, sorry, and is on her third vintage. So this is a really awesome discovery. 
cool labels too. But I want to show you this one because it's a Rosato made from 100% Aliatico. You really don't see this grape uh, as a pure pure 100% uh, made wine very often and you never see it as a rosé. And I love it because it's got a super awesome, not just color, but the taste is like, it just blows your mind. It's uh, it's like I'm drinking, you know, light grapefruit juice or something. Um, I really love it. It's perfect for summer. Uh, a great value, it's like 24 bucks. Um, really, really wonderful. Uh, let's get this one open. So check out the color on this uh, Aliatico Rosato. Um, I mean, it's just naturally bright pink, you know, no games here. And I wish that uh, video could pick up like smell because it's just so cool. I don't know if you can see that. Um, super clean. I mean, this is a really awesome wine. Uh, this is what I love about natural wine. This is a this is a probably one vintage wine. Uh, she'll probably try and make it again next year, but hopefully the Aliatico is as good. So. Mm. It's like sweet, sour, and like a Jolly Rancher. I mean, do you remember those Jolly Ranchers? Those are really good. Maybe a word uh, to Joy actually before before I forget. Uh, not just my sister, but she's got a cool little story where uh, she quit her uh, wine selling life in New York, just picked up, moved to Italy, uh, and pretty much in a few years started making wine. Uh, it's her third vintage, as I said before. The first vintage we drank at her wedding. Uh, the second vintage uh, was 2016, which is awesome. If you've tried it already, and 2017 just gets better and better. We'll try a few more of her wines later. Um, but really, really refreshing, super awesome summer wine. Uh, if you're in Zurich, you can pick it up at Edition Populaire. Uh, and if you're anywhere else in the world, yeah, you can get it on our website. So, um, I guess we got to go to the obligatory uh, Frank Cornelissen bottle here on the mantle. This is Contadino. This is Frank's uh, base red wine. Uh, he also has a Susucaro Rosé, which just arrived for uh, those of you who've been emailing me nonstop. It's 85% Nereno Mascalese. Frank is uh, famous because he is a really pure, uh, very refined, um, super high quality example of Etna Tawar. He makes his wine from four to 800 meters, which I think Barba Vieki Magma is made at 900 meters above sea level on the volcano. Uh, he is 100% natural from the beginning, no sulfites, no nothing. Uh, has really elevated his wines to a whole nother level. Uh, really, his goal is to make wine on the Burgundian niveau. I really respect him for that. Yet he keeps it humble with this awesome Contadino, which you can either drink normal cellar temperature or as I've done, thrown it in the fridge because it's uh, like 35 degrees Celsius out, uh, over 90 degrees, uh, and I need that right now. So, as I said, this wine is 85% uh, Nerello Mascalese, uh, the rest is uh, local indigenous varietals, but it gives the wine a juicy uh, flavor, really structured, but retaining that Nerello Mascalese uh, elegance and minerality. So, I mean, we love Frank, his labels are not uh, the most exciting, uh, but I guess people don't really care because they care what's in the bottle. Uh, so I'll just focus on the wine here. Pretty, uh, I guess, juicy-ish looking red color. I don't know if that makes any sense. Uh, his uh, Mungibel Rosso, which is the next 100, next level up, 100% pure Norello Mascalese, is uh, much deeper in color. And then he has his parcel wines, which are by uh, region and parcel along the mountain. And then, of course, Magma, the, uh, the uh, unicorn wine, I guess you could call it. Um, Yeah, I mean, this is uh, this is the wine for a great evening with friends on a hot summer evening, or even in colder months, uh, you know, just kick back, relax. And it's just got this juiciness combined with this, you know, real minerality you get from this Etna Terroir that I really love. Not to get too complicated with you, but basically. Uh, you have a very, very rare type of soil in Etna, 
and uh, it's the only place in the world you can make wines like this and to have an autochthonous grape or a native grape Narela Mascarese grown there in this quality is really rare. So this is your Frank Cornelissen Daily Drinker. Uh, we'll be showing you uh, upcoming his Mundo Bedroso and of course Sucaru uh, if we have any left uh, by the time we get around to it. But yeah, those are our three wines for today and uh, we look forward to bringing you some more next time.